So somebody wanted to know about optic pits. And as you might expect, it is a pit in the optic nerve. And there are congenital varieties, which is way more common. There are papers that assert that there are acquired versions of this. However, really you should be thinking about congenital lesions in optic pits. So the pit can be anywhere. It can be a central pit or it can be displaced towards the rim. It's often here in the temporal portion of the optic nerve. So, uh, and it, uh, it's, it is a literal pit, a depression. So if you run a line scan through it, it's, it's literally a pit. The issue is fluid can go down that hole and it's still not clear exactly whether that's cerebrospinal fluid coming out or vitreous going in to the hole. And the reason you need to know it is if fluid goes down this hole, it can spread. And if it goes into your fovea, you'll get a serous detachment. So the way the pit causes vision loss is from serous macular detachment related to fluid from here. Whether it's CSF or vitreous is still debated. I think most people believe it's vitreous now. There have been studies to try and see if this is actually connected to the CSF in the sheath or not, but it's, it's been a mixed bag. So you need to know that even though it's mostly a congenital problem, it's on the spectrum of a cavitary disc anomaly where we have some sort of fusion problem in the embryologic development of this nerve. I like to lump it together with cavitary disc anomaly, but if you're a splitter, you would say this, the pit is something separate. Fluid can get under there, go under your macula. Various treatments have been proposed, including vitrectomy to release the vitreous and let the fluid settle out. And um, you can read all about those in the retina section. So the most common way it comes to me is acute unilateral loss of vision, pain less, look at the nerve for the pit, do a macular OCT to see the fluid. If you do a fluorescein angiogram, there's no other point of leakage. And it's a diagnosis that you make clinically. There's no imaging, for example, that is done on this. You could do an MRI. Sometimes there's an associated fluid in the sheath or associated anomalies because it's on the spectrum of cavitary disc anomaly. So no one would fault you if you did an MRI of the head and orbit on this. It doesn't, it doesn't blind people. It just kind of comes and goes. The fluid is quite variable in terms of leaving a mark, which usually means retinal pigment epithelial atrophy after the fluid resolves. I refer all of these to retina and they can talk to them about the various treatment options such as they are. So you need to know a little bit about a pit.